Hey everyone and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be building a working game of chess and I'm going to be building it purely in JavaScript, no canvas, okay? This is actually one of the harder JavaScript tutorials that I have done, so if you're looking to practice your JavaScript fundamentals, then this is the perfect video for you. So this is what the final thing will look like. As you will see, we will have the beige and brown squares, but you will notice that it's not just beige and brown, it goes from brown brown to beige beige. So that is something we're gonna do with modulus and a bit of math. And then of course, we're gonna have to implement the moves of each and every chess piece. For those of you not familiar, we've got the pawns, which move one or two steps at the beginning, and then they can also take over other opponents' pieces diagonally. And then we also have the knight, which moves in this L shape, the rook, which moves horizontally or vertically, assuming there's no one in this way, and then also the bishops, which move diagonally. We, of course, then have the queen, who can move like the bishop or the rook, as well as the king, who could only move one step. So that's what our finished product is going to look like. I hope you're excited. Let's do it. Okay, so first off, we're just going to get up our code editors. I am using WebStorm, which means that I can simply choose to name this project. I'm going to call it JavaScript Chess, and it's going to save it in the directory that I want. Maybe let's just call it JS Chess for short. And then we're going to spin up that project. So there we go. Here is our project. And of course, we need to create some files. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to create one file that's going to be for our HTML. So I'm going to call it index.html. And there we go, the HTML extension will tell our code editors to treat this as an HTML file. WebStorm also gives you some boilerplate, so that has been added. Next, I'm going to create a file for our style sheet, so I'm going to call it styles CSS. So I'm going to add the CSS extension, or you could just click there, it is up to you. We, of course, need some JavaScript, so I'm going to make it app.js for our JavaScript. I'm going to actually make another one as well. Okay, I'm going to make a separate one just for organizational purposes called pieces.js, where we're going to store all our JavaScript pieces, okay, our chess pieces. So that is what we have so far. I'm just going to minimize that and let's continue with our index HTML. So I'm just going to call this, let's just call it chess because we're wacky like that and let's continue. Next, I'm going to just link up the style sheet. So I'm going to use the link tag like so, and I'm going to do rel style sheet. And then we have to actually get the style sheet. So we called it styles.css. Just make sure it's named the same way that that is here. Okay, great. And now let's link the scripts. So basically, I'm going to link the app.js file. But before it, before I want to read this file, I actually want to read the content of the pieces file. Okay, because I will be showing you why we want the content of this to be read before we go ahead and read that, because we'll be defining some pieces in here that we then use in the app.js file. Great. Now, this is going to be super simple. We're not going to really do much here at all. We're just going to have a div, and we're going to give this the ID of game board, just like that. And everything is going to be injected into here. We're going to add this all in JavaScript. I'm just going to add a P element here that is going to tell us whose go it is. So I'm going to do it is, and then we're going to use the span element to kind of interrupt that P element. And let's do a space here. I'm going to go. And then in here, I'm going to pick this out. So I'm going to give this span the ID of player so we can display whose go it is, right? So that's what I have done. And finally, I'm just going to have another P element, and this is going to have the ID of info display, so we can just add extra info if we need. Okay, I'm just going to format that a little bit better. Of course, we will be formatting this much nicer when we actually finish this and upload onto GitHub. Um, let's just get this done for now. Okay, so that is it. In WebStorm, I can just go ahead and click here, and that will open up my chess game. Or if you are not using WebStorm, you can simply Click here, copy the path, copy the absolute path, and then that just means that we can paste it in like so. Either way is good. And then we just inspect this so we can see what's going on. So you already see it is go, that is the HTML we added. And this is essentially the path to my file. So the index HTML file we made in the project called JS Chess that lives in my WebStorm projects. Great. Let's carry on. So now let's actually go ahead and create our game board. So like I said, we're going to be doing this all in JavaScript, which means we need to pick out this whole element, the div with the ID game board. So I'm just going to pick that out 
And then in here, let's define it. So I'm going to go into my whole document, use query selector to look for an element with the ID. So hash is for ID of game board. Okay. And then what should we save this as? I think we should store this as just game board, like so. So there we go. Okay, next, I'm also just going to pick out everything else while we are here. So let's pick out the span with the ID of player. So let's copy that document query selector. And then I'm just going to look for the ID. So hash for ID of player. And what should we say this as? I'm going to save it as the const player display. So we can display whose go it is. Great. Again, I will be kind of cleaning this up later um, for you, but I'm just going to keep that consistent for now. Next, let's also pick out the info display. So let's grab this. I'm going to use document again, dot query selector, and I'm going to look for the info display and it is an ID. So once again, we need to put the hash there and I'm going to save this as info display because I'm really original. Plus it's just more readable. Great. Now let's go ahead and define what kind of state we want to have at the beginning, right? So I'm going to just define this as const start pieces. And we're going to have an array that's going to essentially symbolize what every single one of my squares is going to look like. There's 64 squares because it's an eight by eight board. So maybe let's, yeah, do we need the width? Let's, let's define the width here because I do think we will need that eight by eight board. And now let's get to defining what goes into all of the spaces in our chessboard. So for this, I'm going to actually define pieces, which I'm going to store in here. Now for this, we're actually going to use SVGs. We're going to use them from the internet. So already existing SVGs. Here is where to find them. So here is just one of the king. And we're literally just going to take this code. So here is the URL and this is the code you need. Okay. So either navigate to that or I will put the full file of all the pieces in the video description below. So you can take that too. So first off, I'm just going to do const king equals. And then I'm basically going to open up some quotation marks and just paste that SVG. So that is the whole SVG, as you will see. Let's go ahead and grab the others. So that is the king. Let's also do the queen. So const queen equals, and then we're going to open up our quotation marks and let's search for the queen. So let's search queen, just like so. I'm going to grab this one, click on SVG, copy all of this and then just paste it in like so. So that's two. I'm also going to do the rook. So const rook equals, and then ignore that auto completion. We're just going to put the quotation marks and then let's search for a rook. So I'm just going to search for rook like so. And there we go. We've got a rook. Get this SVG. Of course, you can pick whichever ones you want. I'm just going for the first ones that show up just because I kind of like them. So we've got our rook. Next, we need the bishop. So there we go. Again, ignore the auto completion. Just get your two quotation marks. And then go back here and let's search for the bishop. So I'm just going to search bishop like so. I'm going to copy this. So get the SVG, copy that and whack that in. So that's our bishop. Uh, we also need pawns, right? So const pawn equal. Let's find a pawn. Let's also find, I'm just going to get them all up here now. We need a knight. And I believe that is it. So let's find our pawn. Pawn. There we go. Again, get the SVG, copy that, paste it in and finally get the knight. So I'm going to just search for knight. Let's go down here, copy that and paste that in. So that is now done. We're just going to do a few more things before moving on. So each one of these, I'm actually going to wrap in a div itself. So I'm going to give it an opening tag. And the first one, I'm going to give this the class of piece so that we know that all of these are pieces and could treat them 
essentially like so. So we've got the class of piece there. And then I'm also going to give this the ID of king. Just so when we click on this div in the future, we know that it contains a king. So that is something I have added. Next, I'm just going to actually go ahead and close this. So I'm going to put the closing tag at the end. So right here, I'm just going to close that off with the closing div. And there we go. So that is our complete string. If your code editor is not liking it, perhaps just put it in single quotation marks to make your life easier, okay? And everything more readable. So there we have one. Let's do the same for here. So opening div, and then in this opening div, I'm going to add the class of piece. So all of these are going to have the class of piece, but this one's going to have the ID of queen, okay? So in fact, maybe let's just copy this and just paste it in like so and just change this out. So this is rook, this is gonna be bishop, this is gonna be pawn, and this is going to be knight, right? And then let's put the closing tags at the end. So we have one already. So I'm gonna copy that with the final quotation mark and just paste it in, because it's a closing div, closing tag, that the SVG needs to be wrapped. Okay, great. So that is the whole file. Again, please feel free to take mine if you want. I'll leave it in the description below. Okay, so now that we have all those pieces, like I said, that will be red. So now we can just use those constants, so these constants in our app.js file because that's red here. Okay, so let's do it. So my start pieces, I'm gonna start off with a rook, then it's gonna be a knight, then we have the bishop, then we have the queen, then we have the king, then we have the bishop again, then we have the knight, and then we have the rook. Now let's do the second row. So this is basically all pawns, right? So I'm just gonna put pawn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm just gonna have empty spaces. So I'm literally just gonna do empty spaces like that and put eight of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna have a bunch of pawns again. And then we're gonna have the same. So there we go, bishop, queen, king. That is looking correct to me. And we don't need that comma there. So those are our start pieces. At the moment, you won't see them here, right? Because we haven't really done much with them. I'm just gonna get rid of that. So next is actually displaying this in the browser. So for this, I'm going to create a function. This function is going to be called create board. And we're essentially going to use it to create our board. So inject a bunch of stuff into this div with the ID of game board. So injecting into here. So let's do it. First off, I'm going to actually use this array of 64 items. Just think of an array of 64 items because we want to create 64 squares with pieces. So I'm going to get the start pieces and use for each. And then for each, I'm just going to get the syntax. So for each start piece, let's call it. Okay. And for each start piece, I'm going to use document create element to create a div, okay? And let's call this square. So there we go. We just created a div. We've saved as the const square, and now we can get that square and use class list add a class of square. But we have to actually, you know, style that up. So first off, maybe let's go to our style sheet and get the game board. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger for you, and look for anything with the ID of game board. And let's style it up. I'm gonna give our game board the width of 320 pixels. Uh, let's also give it a height of 320 pixels. Okay, so that looks like a square. So if I go background color black and just look in here, there we go. And next I wanna put 64 squares in here. So let's make a square first. So we just created a class of square. And my square, if I want to fit eight on the width, that means the height and width are going to be 40 pixels, right? Each to make a square that fits eight by eight in the game board. Great. 
So there we go. And then we're also going to alternate, right? A class of beige that we are yet to kind of use in our JavaScript. But I'm simply just going to add the background color. And this is beige. So 1101098. Great. And let's also do brown. So background color. We can just do brown. Or if you want, you can like make an RGB as well. Uh, so maybe let's do that and make it RGB. 43, 43. Great. So we just made beige and brown. Cool. So now what the next thing to do is, well, let's actually, so we've just made the squares, right? Let's actually put them in to our game board. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab the game board and each time it loops, we're creating a div, we're adding the class of square to the square. Then we're going to get the game board and append the square we just made after that class has been added. But uh oh, the square just has, the square class only has a width and a height, right? So I could also do square class list and add another class. So I can do beige. Of course, then they will all be beige, but let's have a look. So I'm just going to get this function and call it down here. And there we go. We've just created 64 squares. So there we go. They go all the way down. They're not wrapping though. So for this, I need to go back to here and I'm just going to get rid of the background for now. I'm going to do display flex and I'm going to do flex wrap, wrap. Okay. And wonderful. So now we have all the squares. However, of course, if you look in here in the game board, so we've injected 64 squares. Each one has a class of square and a class of beige. Well, we don't really want this right one to be beige brown. And let's also maybe give them an ID. So actually what I'm going to do is just pass through I for the index. And I'm also going to get the square and I'm going to use set attribute to set a unique attribute of square ID. And I'm just going to set that square ID to be I. So if we look now and refresh and look in here, you will see we just now added that unique attribute and then an ID to each of the squares going all the way down to 63 because of course we started counting from zero, but there's 64 squares in there. Great. Let's do the colors next. So this is good so far. Um, in fact, maybe before we move on, let's actually use these start pieces. So I can actually also get the square and I can use inner HTML to set essentially this, this string as the inner HTML of the div we just created. So I'm just literally going to grab the start piece because that is what's what presented. So here the rook, you will see the rook is this. So if we save this now, ta-da! We've literally, let's go ahead and get our div with the ID game board. So we've created the squares, we've added a class of square, we've added a class of beige. We've also given them an ID and the, the ones that have, you know, stuff to put in them, we did. We put in a div with a class of piece and the idea of rook, right? You remember making that in the pieces JS file. And then it's also got the SVG. So how cool is that? What a fun way to create a board. Maybe before moving on, I'm just going to style the SVG a little bit more. So we're going to grab the actual SVG itself. So in here, I'm just going to say that if an element that has the class of square also has an SVG in it, I just want to make sure that that SVG has a height of 30 pixels a width of 30 pixels and a margin around it of five pixels to make up for the lack of the uh, 40 pixels that it should fill up for the square. Okay, so there we go. That is looking much better. I'm just gonna make this bigger for us. Let's move on to actually getting the colors of the squares next. So let's go back to our app.js file and let's do it. So for this, I'm just gonna comment that out. This time I'm going to actually define a row. So row, and I'm going to use math 
floor and then I'm going to do 63 minus I right so whatever we're looping so 63 minus I the first loop will be zero so this is going to be 63 over 8 and then we're going to add 1 and this is going to define you know like kind of what row we are in and now if row modulus 2 equals 0 so essentially every other row then we're going to get the square class list add and now we're going to do if i so now it's essentially we're kind of like checking what row we're in and now we're checking which square we are in in that row and if i is modulus 2 and that equals zero and that is true we add beige otherwise if it's not true we add brown okay cool and then we have else and then we just do the opposite so if we're in the other row we grab this and then we just reverse these so i'm going to do brown and then beige cool so let's see what that looks like just make sure to wrap this around so no funky behavior happens and let's check it out. And great, we have done it. So as you will see, beige, brown, beige, brown, but when it gets to here, it's brown, brown, and here is beige, beige, and here is brown, brown again. So that is how you will create a chess board. Wonderful. Next, let's work on actually changing the color of some of these pieces. So we want the first two rows to be black and the last two rows to be white. So I'm going to say that if I, so once again, we're just looping over each one of these squares, right? And if we are in square that is smaller than or equal to 15, so index 15, which means that is square 16, we want the first 16 squares to essentially be black, right? So that means I would get the square. So literally go into the square, get the first child, but then get the first child of that. And I actually just want to add the class list of black to it. Now, these are by default black, but I'm just gonna do it just so in case you wanna know how to change this. So let's go into the first child. Once again, the first child. So the first child, then the first child again. And now I'm gonna do class list add. And I'm going to add the class of black, which means we need to, of course, define it. So here, Let's do black. And this is going to be a fill because SVGs works with fill. Okay, well, on the SVG, we need to change its fill. And I can just do black if I wish. Or maybe let's go ahead and do another color just so it's obvious that it's changing. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, let's make it like here or something. So 28 RGB, 28, 28, 28. Okay, so that's what we have done. We've done it on the first 16 squares. So you will see that is slightly changed. It might be difficult to tell, but if I go into the div, get a first child and get that div's first child, we've added the class of black, which means that the fill has been changed here. And I can also change it like that if I want to just be very sure that that is changing. Great, so now let's do the same for the bottom 16 squares. So this time I'm going to say that if I is larger than or equal to 48, because that will account for the last 16, I'm literally just going to, let's just copy this and I'm going to add the class of white. So this time I'm going to go back in here and define white. So dot white. And again, it's the fill. So what is white again is 255, 255, 255. So now if we refresh this, those will be white. Amazing. So I think we're done with the board for now. Let's add the drag and drop functionalities next. So to do this, what I would do is I would first off back in here. Well, we're going to have to make each one of these draggable, right? So I think, yeah, we can do this forever. If square has a first child, Okay, so we've just added the start piece. So if a first child exists, right, because here we have the parent, here's the first child. So if it has one, as you will see, these do not. Then, 
So if that is true, we can get the square first child and we do set attribute draggable true. We can also make this shorter by just checking if first child exists, then we do that. Okay, great. Set attribute. So now if we look in here, the first child, okay, so once again, I'm just going to minimize this, first child, draggable true, and on these, well, they don't have a first child, so nothing is added. Cool, but all of them should have draggable true. Wonderful. This is looking fantastic. Let's carry on. So we are done with the create board function. There it is. Let's move on. So I'm just going to move down here just like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is just grab every square. So to do this, I'm going to essentially look in my game board and grab every, we could grab every element with a class of square, or you could just grab the div. It is totally up to you how you want to do it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go document, query selector all, and we're going to look in the document for an element with the ID of game board, and then grab every element inside of that with a class of square. Okay, you could have done div, it is up to you. And let's save this as something. I'm going to save it as the const all squares equals just like that. Great. So that is done. So now for all of the squares, we're going to grab all of the squares. If I console log this out, I'm just going to show you what this looks like. All squares, let's have a look. Okay, we've just picked up all those squares, right? And we've put them in a node list. So you will also see that each of the squares, you see the div, you see the class that it has, and you see the color. So that is a bunch of useful information that we can use. And now, once we have all those squares in our node list, I'm going to say for each one of them, so for every single one in that node list, let's call it a square, what I'm going to do is add event listeners to each one of them. So I'm going to grab the square and use add event listener to listen out for a drag start event. And then when the dragging starts, I'm going to call a function that I have called drag start. Okay. So I'm going to define that here, drag start, just like so. And for now, I'm just going to pass through E for event and console log the event so we can see what's happening. So this just means that when I start dragging any one of these, the drag event is called, and this is the event. I really just want the target. So I'm just going to get this. So this is the information I want. I want the div with the ID of corn that also has the class of piece. I want to save that. So let's use dot notation because it's an object to get the target. Okay. So I'm just going to go E target, which means that now when I drag a piece, that is the only information we get. So I'm literally getting that whole element and it's got the SVG in there and so on. Okay. I'm dragging that whole thing, which is pretty cool. So that's what I am doing on the drag start. In fact, let's go ahead and save this as something. So we could either save the whole thing, but in fact, we only really care about the start position. So I only care about the parent that this element's in, so the square. So if I do e target parent node, let's try that again. I'm going to get this pawn. I know that that pawn lives in the div with the square ID 10. And if we look in here, it does. So I just want this square ID. So I'm going to use get attribute in order to get this value. So parent node get attribute, and I'm going to get the square ID. So now what do you think will happen when I drag this one? That's right. We just get the ID that it started in. So let's save this as the start position. So I'm going to actually save this as a universal thing. So let start position, position ID equal. And I'm just going to, 
essentially start off with it being nothing, so null. And then instead of consoling this out, I'm just going to save that to start position. Okay, so when we start dragging, at the moment start position is null, but as soon as you start dragging something, we get that square ID, we save it to here, which overrides it up here. Great. I'm also actually, just in case, just going to get the whole dragged element itself and save it as well. So dragged element, that's just the E target, right? So again, let dragged element. Cool. So now we have those two things being saved. You could have just saved the dragged element and then got the ID from it later. It's totally up to you. Okay. So we've got the drag start. Now I also want the drag over event. So as soon as you start dragging over anything, so let's define drag over function drag over. And this time I'm just going to prevent the default action happening. So E prevent default. Okay. So when we're dragging over the default action of drag over should not happen. So if I didn't have this, I'm just going to console log E target. You will see, oh, whoops, E is not defined, pass through E. You will see it's telling me what I'm dragging it over. I don't care about that and it might cause some funky behavior. So I'm just going to do E prevent default. Next, I'm going to do drag drop where all the magic is going to happen. So we're going to listen out for a drop event and we're going to define drag drop. So these I'm not making up. These come from a long list of things that we can listen out for. So let's define drag drop here. Function drag drop, just like so and drag drop. So this is interesting because we are dropping into squares that are empty, right? Most of the time. But of course, we're gonna have to drop into squares that already have something in there. And if I drop into this, well, we are dropping into the div, but technically we could also be dropping into the path, the SVG, the piece, and so on. We don't want any of this to happen, right? We just want to make sure that we are dragging and dropping into the square itself. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First off, I'm just going to go into the style list and I'm going to say that each square has a position of relative because each of its children, so the SVG, I'm going to position relative, but also give it a Z index to so make sure it's always behind the square. So let's go ahead and um, you can go very aggressive, like minus nine. I don't really know what we have in front. So we've got the SVG done. Let's also get the path. And again, just give it a position relative. We can make this minus 10 to make sure that the path is always behind the SVG. And then also one last thing, I'm going to get the piece. So the actual piece itself and put it in front of the square. So I'm going to have a position relative, but to put this at a positive number. So let's go with nine. So this just means that the piece will always be first. Okay, so when we hover over it, it's the piece that shows up and not the square. So that works, which means that when we drag over onto here, we'll be interacting with the piece and then dropping into the square. So replacing that piece. So that's what you have to do. Now let's go back here and to prevent any funky behavior happening so we don't, you know, drop into two pieces and this function is called twice, I'm going to use E stop propagation. So that is important. Okay, and then we can get whatever we are dropping into. So that square, so the E target parent node, right? Because as I said, this is what we are dropping onto. We're dropping onto the piece, but the parent node is the square. So that's what we want to drop into, right? So we're going to get the parent node and append the element we are dragging. So this drags element. Hopefully that makes sense. But this is only if, you know, something exists in that square, because if it doesn't, there will not be a parent node. It will just be the square. So in that case, we just get E target and then we just append 
the dragged element. Okay, so if we are going here, that will be dropped in there. As you will see, ta-da, we can now drag and drop pieces. And if we are wanting to replace the piece, of course that will not work, so let's get rid of that. Let's do that. This will add another piece into here, but of course we need to remove the existing piece. So for that to happen, I would need to essentially, after we append it to E, target, remove everything in there. Great. So now it would be like that. And now we can take over the pieces. Of course, that's not the correct play. We, are, we still have a lot to do. So let's continue. I just wanted to show you how to drag and drop efficiently in JavaScript. Okay, so let's move on. Let's make sure this only happens if there is already a piece there and that it's also the opponent's piece. Okay, so that is something that we're going to have to define. So first, let's check if something is taken. So I'm going to define taken. And how would we define taken? Well, if e target class list contains the class piece, right? Because if you look in here, if the class list contains piece, then we know that there's something in there, right? So once again, I'm just going to console log e target for you. Let's put it up here and just checking if we have any console logs, but I don't think we do. So if I now drop that in here, you will see that we dropped it into this square. That's the E target. Or if I drop it into here, you will see that we dropped it into the div with the class of square and brown and the square ID 19. So that means that if we drop in here and we look in here, there is a class of piece that exists here. So we know that is taken. So that's essentially what we're looking for. We're dropping it. And if this e target classes contains the class of piece, we know that it is taken. So that's why we've saved it under the const taken. Next, we need to actually keep count of whose go it is, right? Because we need to know if it's our go or well, were the blacks go or the whites go. So I'm going to define that here. Let player go. And currently, let's start off with the player go being black, so black should start. Let's also, while we are here, get the player display and use text content to change that to be black. Let's go. Okay. So that just means it is black go. We can probably even change this to be S, just so it's obvious and the grammatically correct. So we're starting off with being blacks go. We've changed that player display context. So this is like the start state. And now let's actually switch this every time we drop. So I think if it's a successful drop, so for now I'm just gonna put it in here, I'm gonna write a function called change player, okay? And just call it. So let's define this function, function, change player just like so and if player go equals black which it currently does we want to reverse it so we want to go player go and override it to be white and we also want to get the player display text content and change it to be white. That is not the only thing we need to do, but for now, I'm just going to finish this off. Else, player go equals black, and player display context equals black. Okay, great. So now every time we drop, that should change. Even though, you know, it's not successful, we are changing that each time thanks to this function right here. One other thing we want to do is actually reverse 
the IDs, right? Because when we are black, you know, that makes sense that we're starting off with this being a zero for the square ID and this being ID 63. But when it's white goes, we want this to be square zero and this to be 63 so that we can move the chess pieces in the correct way. Think of it like flipping the board, right? If you're playing against yourself. So we now need to revert these IDs. So I'm gonna write a function to do that. So I'm gonna do this down here, function, reverse IDs and I'm going to use document query selector all to grab everything with the class of square. In fact, we could have just done that up here. Where did I do that? We don't really need to look in the game board. Let's just get everything with the class of square. And let's save this as all squares. So we're getting the squares, we're getting the freshest squares when we call this function, because the other ones are stale now. <laughs> well, not stale, but you know what I mean. We're getting the freshest ones when we call this function. And for each of them, so let's grab all the squares. And for each square, we're going to have to get the index. And I'm just going to override the square ID. So I'm going to get the square. I'm going to use set attribute. Just make sure to name this exactly the same so we can override the square ID. I'm just going to put this on a new line for you. And then we're going to override it with the reverse of it. So this is a cool way to do reverse with multiply by width. So essentially 64 minus one, right? Because we want to start with 63. And we're just going to minus I from it. So the first time we loop, I think we're missing a parenthesis here and here. So the first time we loop, the i is going to be zero. So width multiplied by width minus one is 63 minus zero. So we override the first square, which originally had square id zero to be 63. And then we minus two from it, so 62 and so on and so on. So that's how you would reverse the ids. Now let's write a function to revert the ids. So function revert ids, just like so. And this time, well, once again, we're going to get the freshest squares. So I'm going to grab all that. And now I'm just going to grab all the squares again. And for each square, thank you, tab nine, for that auto completion. This time, I'm just going to get the square and use set attribute and just place it back to being i. So I'm going to get the square id and then just make it i again. So we want to revert them back when the player's go is back to being black, but we want to reverse them when we want the player's go to be white. Okay, so once again, let's check it out. So let's look at these. Just make sure you are looking at these numbers right here. If I take a go, you will see those IDs are now reverted. So that square ID zero is now here. And it's just like as if we flip the board so we can play both parts. Okay. And I'll do it again and it will keep reversing and so on and so on. So great, there we have it. We have now reversed these squares. What should we tackle next? Now let's go back to writing our drag drop function where a lot of stuff is happening. So we're already checking if a piece is taken. Let's also now check for if it's taken by the opponent or if even if it's the correct go. Okay, so let's check that the correct player is actually dragging stuff. So I'm going to get the dragged element. And if the dragged element's first child, class list, so class list, I can make this bigger, contains player go. So player go. So whatever we have here, so whatever's being stored. So what this line is saying is that if the dragged element, I'm just going to console of the dragged element. If we are dragging a black piece, obviously we want to make sure that the class is black, but that's also aligned to player go, which should be black. So let's check it out. It says black here. I'm dragging that. And the first child does indeed have the class of black. So that should be a correct go. Let's define that. 
So all I'm going to do is say const correct go because if we are dragging it and it does not contain black, it contains white, that will not be a correct go. So this at the moment, the last time we did it would be true. So we can now use it. Now, let's also define the opponent go const opponent go. Okay. And player go, which we defined as black above, if player go equals white, well, then we want to just change it. So we know that the opponent in this case is the black. Otherwise, it's white. Okay, great. So we've just defined the opponent go. And now let's define if something is taken by the opponent. So const taken by opponent. So just like that. I'm going to get e target. So whatever we're dropping it into. Again, let's maybe console log that up here so I can show you. E target. And we're going to get its first child. And if it exists, because sometimes it might not exist, class, we're checking if the classes contains the opponent go this time. Okay. So let's check it out. Um, dragging this, I'm going to drop it in here where we know that this will contain a first child and we're going to get that E target. So the first child, the class list is opposite ours, right? Because we're black, it's white. So we know that is taken by the opponent, right? Because this has a class of white, whereas we're currently, I'm just going to console log this as well, console log player go. Maybe let's just do this so it's really obvious. Play go. E target. So player go. I'm going to drop here. Player go is black. That's what we're dropping into. We're getting the first child and we're set checking the classless contains opposite. So player go equals white no it equals black so then we return white let's also console log opponent go okay and i'm just going to move that down here so let's check it out so if i grab this i'm dropping it in here we are player go is black that's e target the opponent go is white and we're going e target first child and we're checking the classes contains opponent go, which it does because we've got class white. So we know that that is taken by the opponent. Got it? Good. I'm just going to get rid of all these console logs again. Okay, so now we've defined a bunch of stuff. Let's use it. So if correct go, right, and this just means that we are the correct player, you know, I'm the black player and I picked up a black piece as we've defined here, which is checking that that dragged element does indeed have the class of black. Then I'm going to, um, we're going to, you must check this first, check this first. I'm just going to make some pseudocode for you. We're going to check if taken by opponent and valid. So valid is another thing we're going to have to define. If it's taken by the opponent and it's valid, we essentially want to, you know, replace that element, right? So we're going to put in all of these things, as we discussed before, we're going to essentially append that dragged element, the element we are dragging and remove whatever else is in there. Great. And then of course we can also change the player. So I'm going to do that here and then I'm just going to return out of this. So I'm going to move this from here. So that is if it's taken by the opponent and it's a valid move. However, if, so we're going to do then check this, if it's just taken, right, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to return out of this. You can, if you want, put some text here saying like, you can't go there. So info display text content. You cannot go here if you wish. This is optional if you want. You can also just make sure that the info display 
kind of resets itself with an empty string after some time has passed if you want. So I'm going to do set timeout and just pass that through into here and make sure that happens after, let's say, two seconds. Great. That is something you can do. So let's check that out. I'm just going to comment that out. Make sure that piece is spelled correctly. You cannot go here and that will disappear. Of course, it will go for here too um, because we haven't said and not taken by opponent. So and not taken by opponent. Okay, so now it won't happen there, but it will happen here. So that is optional. You don't have to have that if you don't want. I'm just going to put that back in for now. And now finally, if valid, so once again, we're going to have to define valid, well, then we just want to drag in the element, right? So we're assuming nothing's in the square. This is just valid. It's a valid move. So we can just put that in there and then we can change the player as well. And then let's return out of this. So let's divide this valid, shall we? Let's do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that up here. So const valid, and we're actually going to write a function. The function is going to be check if valid. So we're going to pass through the target, so what we just dropped into, and now let's write our function. So let's do so here. I'm just going to make some space. So function check valid, check if valid, and we're going to just pass through the target of what we have just dropped into. Now, the target. Um, let's just console log target. So it's e target essentially, but obviously I didn't pass through e target. I just passed through target because we call whatever we want. I'm just going to show you what this looks like. So this is the target. Just making sure line 95. In fact, maybe let's get rid of this. In this case, the target is a square. It's got div class square brown. It gives us the ID. However, if I drag it here, we're dragged into a pawn, right? So we want to account for both of these. And essentially what we want is just the ID of the square. So we're going to do this. We're going to say, let's define our target ID. And I'm going to get the target and I'm going to use get attribute square ID, right? Because in the case of this being a square, so if we dropped here, we would just get the square ID. This is the target We're using get attribute to get the square ID, which is the value 18. However, we also need to account for if this is a piece. So to do that, I'm going to say get that. But if that does not exist, then we get the target. So if it's the pawn piece, we then need to get its parent node and then we use get attribute square ID, right? Because in the case of us dropping it here, we need to get its parent and that lives in this square with square ID 14 and then we get that value. So hopefully that makes sense. So now I can just console log target ID, okay? And they also, this should now just show me whatever square we are in, regardless of if there's a pawn or anything like that in there. We now need to also change this to a number as we're going to be adding and subtracting. So I think the easiest way to do this is just wrap this in number and also wrap this in number. So just like that. And that gets saved to the const target ID. We then also need to get the start ID. Start. ID and for that we can just use the start position ID. So where is it? Start position ID. So we can just grab that. And then also pass it through number just to make sure we're going to be adding numbers together and not numbers and strings. Great. And now I just want to get the piece. So const piece. So I'm going to get the dragged element. So whatever this is, so like this pawn, but gets ID. So by ID, I just mean whatever we called it. In this case, it would be the string pawn. 
So dot ID. So I'm just going to console log this out. We've got the target ID console log start ID. So start ID and then console log piece piece. So then now we have all that information, right? So if I go from here to here, we know that we started at square with ID 12 and we went for square with ID 28 and we try to drag the pawn. So that's all the information we're going to need from now on to find out if a move is valid. So let's do it. So let's start off. Well, I'm going to just use the switch case for this switch. And we're going to switch out what happens based on what piece we are dragging. So that's why I'm just going to pass through the piece. And that's what we're going to switch out. So if the case is pawn, as we just saw, then it should go here. We're going to have to do a bunch of math for this. So this is uh, a lot of code. I tried to refactor it, but in the end, I kind of kept it like this because by refactoring, I just made it more messy. So I think this is the best approach. But if you have a different approach, then please do let me know. Please feel free to take this, you know, improve on it and just feel free to yeah, make it your own. So I'm just going to actually define the start row, right? Because as we know with pawns, they can move two spaces, but only if they start off in their original place. So for their first move. So the starter row for the pawns is going to be square with ID eight. So that one all the way to square with ID 15. So let's define that eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. So that is the start row. And of course, when we change player, then this will be, let's try this, I'm going to show you. Just drag one. Oh, we can't now because we've put some uh, code there, but this will flip out, right? So then we'll start zero, one, two, and this will be the starter row. So that will be true for when we are playing with the white pieces. Okay, now if starter row, includes start ID, then we know that we are in this start row, right? Because if we start off, if we drag one and it's gone eight, then we know we're in the start row. So that's what I'm checking. So if that is true and start ID plus width, so plus eight multiplied by two equals the target ID, then we know this is a valid move. So let's talk this through. Okay. So there we go. I'm actually going to do a lot more of these. So let's put this on a new row. So what was our start ID? So we know that if start ID is an eight and that is included in this, we know that we are in fact in the starter row. And then we're also checking that the start ID plus width multiplied by two, so 16 equals the target ID. So what I mean by this is that, oops, I'm just going to do return true as that is what we're going to want to return. If I drag this piece and what this has square ID eight, right? I am saying that my start ID is going to be eight. And what's my target ID going to be? Well, it can be eight plus the width multiplied by two because eight plus 16 will take me here to the square with ID 24. Okay. So if that is true and that equals the target ID 24, cause I just dragged it in there, that is a valid move. Okay. So we're literally just using maths to figure out if the target ID is valid for where we want to go. Great. So that is one of them. Should I talk it through again? Maybe let's do a simpler one. So this time if star ID plus width, which we know is eight because we defined it up here, equals target ID, then we also know it's valid, right? 
So let's talk it through. Star ID plus width equals target ID. So say I wanted this one. So my star ID would be eight. I dropped it in here by mistake, so target ID is eight, so nothing really happened. But if I was to grab this again, so my start ID would be eight, and I wanna drop it in here. So if I drop that in there, my target ID would be 16, right? So I can say that eight plus the width, which is eight equals 16, and that is a valid move. So this should be valid, okay? This, however, should not be valid because eight, plus width does not equal 17, right? So that is not a valid move. So again, we're just using maths to essentially say what moves are valid thanks to the target ID and using the width constant. So that is another one. The next thing I'm going to do is allow for moves that allow me to move here and here. So let's do that first and then make sure that there is an opponent there to take over because that's the only time that move is valid. So this time I'm going to, once again, get the start ID. I'm gonna add width to it. However, I'm gonna minus one. And if that equals the target ID, then that is a valid move, okay? So that just means, so what is width minus one? Eight minus one is seven. So start ID plus seven should equal the target ID, which means that if I go here, that is a valid move because start ID plus seven does equal 16. Great, now let's just make sure there's an opponent there too. So to do this, I'm gonna check that also, I'm gonna use document query selector, and I'm gonna look for, so let's get our back ticks, I'm gonna look for the custom attribute of square ID, and just make sure that it equals the star ID, so I'm actually gonna to have to use so make sure there's a back tick so that you can put code in here. And then I'm gonna pass through the start ID plus the width minus one. Okay, so I'm literally finding the square that we are planning to go into and then checking if it has a first child. Okay, because if it does and that is true and this is true, then it's a valid move. So that's what I have just done there. Let's do the same. So I'm just gonna copy all of this for width plus one. So essentially, if we wanna go in the square here, which means that we also need to find that square or the board and check if that square that we want to go into has a first child. Because if it does, we know that it's taken by the opponent or essentially anyone in general, and then that is a valid move. Great. So that is now it for the pawn moves. This is looking good. We can't go there because there's no opponent. We can go here and we can also go two forward. However, we can't go three forward. We can go here. We can't go there unless there's an opponent there. So great. So now let's try this out. I'm gonna go here. It's white go. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. It's white goes again. And now it's black's go. So I'm gonna try take over that. And we did it. We took it over because that was now a valid move. Great, let's move on. So let's go back here. Now I'm just going to essentially break out of this just like that. And let's write our next case. So case, and this time let's deal with the knight. So there we have it. There is our case for the knight. If we're gonna use the same logic, however, the knight, well, we're gonna get the star ID, and then we're going to, essentially, how does the knight move? So if we are here, whoops, let's comment that out for now. If we are here, what ID is this? This is ID six, so we're gonna to have to add one to the width, width multiplied by two to be here, and then minus one. So let's do it. I'm gonna do star ID plus width multiply two minus one. So that is a valid move, and we're just gonna check it equals the target ID, so the square we want to drop into. So that's a valid move for the knight. Some other ones are, well, of course, if we have minus one, we also have plus one, because we wanna be able to be able to drop here, right? 
So that is also a valid move. What else do we have? We have start ID plus width minus two. And we're going to check if that equals the target ID because this time we're just going one width and then minus two. And then let's do it for the opposite side as well. So I'm going to get start ID plus width plus two, just like that. And now let's do some more. So this time let's do minus. So I'm going to copy these, change them to these minuses because it will also go minus. So if the knight was here, it can go backwards as well. So that is valid for the knight. And we're also going to do the same for these. So I'm going to grab these again and just change these to be negatives like so. So that should be all the moves of the knight. Great. And if any of those are true, then I want to return just the value true. So our function will return the Boolean of true. Wonderful. And now let's break out of this. Next, let's do the bishop. So case bishop, just like so. And I'm going to do if the bishop, well, I'm going to say that the bishop can go start ID plus width plus one and make sure that equals the target ID, right? Because we are checking that the bishop can move width plus one. So width plus one should be here. So that is a valid move for the bishop. Now let's do it for the next row. So we're going to get the start ID. We're going to do plus width multiplied by two now plus two, right? Because we're checking now if we can go width, width, two. So right there. So that's what I have done. However, when doing this, we also need to check that there's no other piece in that path. So once again, I'm going to use document, query selector, and I'm going to look for the square ID. I'm going to check that it equals. And then I'm going to use my dollar sign and curly braces to just pass through the previous step that we were in. So we're essentially checking if we're going here that nothing exists here because if something exists here, we cannot go there. So we're checking that nothing exists here. So we put the bang in there and then we just check for the first child, right? Because that's the actual thing that we're checking for. So actually this needs to be in back ticks all the way up to here. Great. So there we go. And just make sure that is wrapped like so, and then get rid of that one. Cool, next one. So hopefully you get the gist now. I'm just gonna copy this one and paste it. And let's check for width multiplied by three plus three. And now we're gonna check for two of these. So we're gonna check for this one, but also, so and, the next one. So we're going to do width multiplied by two plus two. Wonderful. So let's do this all the way up to seven. So maybe it's easy just to do this. So multiply by four plus four, multiply by five plus five, multiply by six plus six, multiply by seven plus seven. Now let's check for these two squares. So I'm going to get all of that. Paste it, but also look for the next one down. So I'm going to copy this and paste that. So multiply by three plus three. Okay. And again, let's just get this whole row. In fact, we can do it for all of them now. I'm just going to paste that in. Let me format that a little bit better. And we're just now going to add the next one here. So we're going to check for width multiplied by 4 plus 4. I'm just going to copy this one. 
paste it, but also paste the next one, multiply with five plus five, and again here. So paste, paste, five plus five, but now also multiplied by six plus six. So there we go. That should be all of them now. I'm just going to make this smaller just to check that we have accounted for all of them. Four, five, six. Great. Now let's continue because we have a lot more to do. So that is one direction. So essentially we've got this one and checked all the way for these. Let's do the others. So now, again, I'm just going to grab the start ID. This time I'm going to do minus width, minus one. And in fact, I'm just going to copy all of these because it's probably easier to do that and just change them all to be minuses instead of pluses. So copy all of this. And now I'm just going to do minus, 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 minus and the same for here minus 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 so that means that also in these if I'm just going to do command in fact yeah I'm just going to do it manually because I don't want to make any mistakes this is very fiddly right so make sure that your attention span is on high alert at the moment because one little mistake will ruin all of this. And same for here. So minus, 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 minus. Just a few more now. Minus, minus. We're nearly done, just bear with me. Of course, the code will be available if you are part of the Code with Annual community, so please check that out. Again, minus, 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 and a few more. Minus, 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 and last one. Minus, minus. And the next one, let's do it. So once again, I'm just going to copy all of this for the next one, because now we're going to want to go backwards as well. So once again, let's copy all of this and let's do every direction that we can move. So this time I'm going to do minus plus. So the second ones are pluses now, plus, 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 plus which means that here also they are plus, 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 plus. And then here's a plus, 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 and then Pluses on the fours, pluses on the fives, and then just one on the six. And last one, so again, I'm just going to paste. And this time pluses are first and then minus. So I'm just going to change these to be pluses and then the minus. So there we go. And this should account for all the moves for the bishop. So there we go, that's the first one. Then we have here, we need to check. Plus, 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 plus. And then here, plus, 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 and there we go. So this is now looking good. 
let's move on. Let's just get rid of this final operator there. Wonderful. So if any of those are true and there's a lot return, true. And then let's break out of this, so break. Okay, now we're gonna do the rook. So case of the string of rook. And this is very similar to the bishop. So if start ID plus width, so we're literally going one down in the chessboard equals target ID, it's a valid move, right? Because we are checking that we can go from here to here. That would be a valid move. However, if we go from here to here and there's something here, then we can't go there. So we need to check for that as well. So very similar to what we just did. Start ID, this time plus width, multiplied by two equals target ID, but also let's check. So uh, let's check that nothing exists in between. So document query selector. In fact, I'm just going to literally maybe copy that so we don't make any mistakes, but this time we are checking for start ID plus width only. So start ID plus width. And let's do the rest. So once again, maybe I'll zoom out. I'm gonna copy this, apologies if this is really small. And then let's do add this one, but check that it's start ID plus width multiplied by two this time. So change that to a three. And in fact, maybe let's just copy these and just decide how many we want to do. We want to do four, five, six, and seven. And then let's copy the rest of these. So I'm just going to copy all of this, paste that in, and let's account for the next one. So I'm going to copy that paste it in and just make sure that's width multiplied by three, copy it, paste it, add another one, but making sure to pass through width multiplied by four, copy all of this one, and then just make a space there and make sure to add another one Checking for if width multiplied by five. And last one. So copy all of that. Paste it and add one to check for start ID plus width multiplied by six. Great, so that is one done. Let's move on to the other because we're gonna have to check for multiple directions, right? So I'm just gonna do the same as above. So do two lines, comma that out and paste it. And this time we're just gonna change everything on this one to be minuses. So minus, 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 minus. Here the same, minus, 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 minus. And then we have minus, 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 minus. Again, minus, 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 and then minus. Okay, let's paste again, because now we're going to do just going to the left and right. So this time we don't need the width. We're just going to do start ID plus one, start ID plus two, start ID plus three, start ID plus four, start ID plus five, 
So I have D plus six and plus seven, which means that we, again, just check for star ID plus one, plus one, plus one, 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 one. Here, let's just make it plus two, plus two, plus two. I'm just going really slow with this, just so it's really obvious what I'm doing for those following along. I'm doing it very manually. I'm not using any like commands or shortcuts. Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus five, plus five, and then plus six. And one last one. This time I'm just gonna change this all to be negatives this time. So I'm gonna copy all of this just like so paste it and let's just change it to negative. So negative, 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 minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, I know this is really boring, but you know, it's necessary if you want a working game of chess. And of course you can use the commands if you want. Again, I'm just doing this so slow so that anyone following along can see exactly what I'm typing. Because I think sometimes when you use like commands, um, it's not so obvious on a tutorial. So there we go. We have just done all of them. This should now work. So if any of those are true now, you want to return true. Okay, and make sure that's in the curly braces. Great. Okay, and now let's break out of this and we're going to write the queen. So case for the queen. This is going to be easy. Okay, because all I'm going to do is say if and the queen can move like the rook and the bishop. I can't add case queen here and case queen there because that will be double and it won't work. It will just pick up the first one, which means I'm just going to have to make its own case. So I'm going to copy all of the bishop's moves and make them valid for the queen and then add an operator because I'm also going to add all the rook's moves. So let's grab all the rook's moves. All right, so I'm just grabbing all the rook's moves this time, all of these, copying them and adding them to the queen's moves. And there we go. So those are all the queen's moves. It is a lot. So if any of those are true, return true, okay? And break out of this. One last one, we have the king. So let's do it. I'm gonna do case king if, and the king is easy, right? Because he can just move a star ID plus one, and we check that's the target ID. So in fact, this is kind of good. Thanks, tab nine. I'm just gonna hit enter on that. And then star ID minus one, but then he can also go plus width. He can also go minus width. So you can essentially go all the way around, right? And then we have star ID plus width minus one. Let's do plus width plus one. And then we have minus width, minus one, and minus width plus one. Okay, and then this we return as true. Cool, so now we've accounted for all the moves. This should work. They must always equal the target ID, right? Because that's where we are heading. That's what we are checking against. So just add in that equals target ID there. Just like I am doing now, making sure that it looks good. So once again here as well. And it means we're going to have to do this on the Queen's ones as we copy pasted from there. So again, if you want to refactor this, please be my guest. I've chosen this approach, but of course you don't have to. 
you can choose whatever approach you wish and you can take this code and you can improve on it and you can let me know if you've managed a neater way of doing this but for me this was the neatest way and I played around with this loads but you know I'm obviously always open to other people's solutions on how to create this game. And hopefully this will give you a good starting point if you do wish to, you know, expand on it yourself. So there we go. So everything's now equaling a target ID. Wonderful. Now that we've done that, let's actually write what happens when we check for a win. So let's do it. I'm just going to do it at the bottom. So let's do it here. Function check for win. And great. Now to check for the wins, we're actually going to collect all the kings. I think that's the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to look in my document and I'm going to use query selector all and I'm going to find everything with the ID of king. So there should be two. For this to work, as I'm going to use sum, the method of sum, I need to put this in an array. So I'm going to create an array from this. Okay, so that's all I have done. I've just collected all the kings. So if I, I'll console log this out just so you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is say that if, so what I'm going to do is get the kings, and if any of them, so I'm going to use sum, so if any of the two kings have, so king, a first child that has a class list that contains white actually that does not contain white well then we know that the black player wins right so i'm just going to do info display inner html because what i'm saying is if, if at this point there is we had two kings a black king and a white king and then suddenly there's no white king that means the black player wins right so that's all that is saying right which is finding looking for all the kings and if there's no white king then the black player obviously wins I explained that twice. Okay, black player wins. Uh, and then all I'm also gonna do is get all the squares, so const all squares, and I'm gonna use document query selector all. So I'm gonna grab everything with a class of square. And why am I doing this? Is because I wanna remove the event listeners to make them draggable so that we can't drag anything anymore. So squares for each and for each square i'm just going to get the square and i am going to check that the first child exists and if it does i'm going to do set attribute draggable and override it to be false great so that's all i've done and now let's just copy this and do the same for if the there is no black king because if there's no black king well, then the white player wins. And we display that. And where do we want to call this function? I think we should call it right before we change the player. So right here and also right here. And that's it. We finished the game. So let's give it a whirl. So I'm just going to move these out. Let's go ahead and get the queen in action. And let's kill that king. So I'm just going to move that there. Blacks go. Whites go. I'm just going to move that here. I'm going to get that. And then let's get the king, oh, it's white's go, sorry, get the king, black player wins. Great, because we've gotten rid of the other king. And that's it. So please hope you have fun with this, play around with it. Please let me know if there's any bugs. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but I can never be too sure. And yeah, just please take the game, make your own, style it up, and I just hope you have fun. Thanks so much for watching.